Thank you, everyone. Good morning. All right. Would, well, you know, probably in three minutes, I will say a good afternoon. <laughs> um, so let me get the slides. Uh, so my name is Shif Zhang, and I'm a software engineer from Cadera. So in the past few years, I have been working on mostly on Apache projects. So I'm a, a PMC member for Apache Sentry and Apache Hive, as well as a committer for Apache Pig project. But today I'm going to talk about um, talk about uh, Apache Sentry, especially how you may uh, use it to secure to your Hadoop cluster. Here is the outline of my talk. So first, uh, I'd like to give you some information about um, the background information about uh, why we created the Apache uh, Sentry project. Then, then we will give, I will give you some uh, basic information about the security concepts in the context of Hadoop uh, ecosystem, such as authorization, authentication, data protection, and encryption, etc. Then I will introduce, formally introduce Apache Sentry, uh, telling you what's the Sentry and the, um, Sentry's architecture and how you may use Sentry in your product and uh, internally how Sentry works. Then I will lay out the uh, roadmap for for the short term for um, Apache Sentry. Of course, uh, a Q&A session at the end. So as you may notice, the Hadoop has gained significant uh, momentum in the past few uh, years. So it can be seen in the following aspects. So today there are more and more users or more enterprises are, use, use, are using and adopting Hadoop as their mission critical uh, platform. So we see that the enterprise are putting more and more data, in, sometimes including sensitive data on Hadoop cluster. And also the data are exposed to more and more users, not just a few data scientists in the, in the enterprise, but also to a, a bigger audience such as data analysts, IT specialists, or the uh, marketers, et cetera. So from all the use cases that we see, data warehouse offload seems to be the most uh, dominant usage for Hadoop. So um, why? That's because traditional data warehouse, right? Data warehouse is important. That's where you get your business insights, but the data Traditional data warehouse it doesn't scale up to handle the data volume that we are seeing, especially if there is an alternative such as Hadoop. So with that, a lot of Hadoop tools are introduced, such as Hadoop, Hadoop Apache Hive, Apache Drill, and Cloudera Impala. People love those tools because they provide familiar SQL interfaces. I would say that uh, SQL on Hadoop is a phenomenon. But there are, this is all good news, but there are problems as well. So what are the problems? Enterprise, right, after they put the sensitive data on the cluster, they want to protect, protect the data. They will want every user has access to every piece of data. In the same time, there are regulations and governance rules that require Certain, uh, certain security measures to be taken. These rules, uh, there are examples like the compliance requirement, such as HIPAA, PCI, PII, and the FISMA, right? Enterprise has the, um, has the responsibility to comply with these uh, rules. But we know that uh, Hadoop is not, uh, uh, is not started with the security uh, in the top priority. But now with this uh, greater adoption, security has become the top priority for, for a lot of components in Hadoop ecosystem. Even after this effort, we can see that uh, different components provide the different uh, security mechanisms. What, 
And but uh, in Hadoop system, we know that uh, um, the same data may be accessed by different applications. For example, a table in high with nothing but a directory on HDFS. But uh, high is not the only application that use, uh, can access the data. For example, you can use uh, MR jobs, or you can use uh, Apache Peak or H catalog to access the data. So that's uh, make the things uh, more complicated. And uh, since Hadoop was um, uh, inherently unsecured, so I would say that uh, Hadoop was born of trust, not, uh, not uh, security. This very, that sounds familiar, right? So like uh, Windows in the earlier stages where security doesn't exist. So now I'm giving you a little bit of uh, uh, introduction on security concepts in the context of uh, Hadoop. So authentication is uh, to identify who you are. So um, we have uh, with the, to identify who you are, there are multiple, there are a few alternatives. So the default coming from Hadoop is unsecured. So what you can do, you can isolate your network so that an unauthorized user have no access to your cluster. So, and also it assumes that uh, in the trusted network, every, everybody is, uh, is uh, trusted, is a good citizen. They do whatever they are supposed to do and uh, don't do things that's bad for the, for the cluster. And uh, one brief uh, assumption in, in, in this uh, approach is that uh, the, who you are is actually determined by the current host, which is not necessarily the same as the cluster. But if those, this solution doesn't uh, satisfy your need, you have the choice of strong authentication, which is, comes from later, from later in Hadoop. Now the Kerbos is supported in Hadoop. You can use Kerbos to, to, to use for the authentication. So sometimes an uh, enterprise would prefer to use uh, um, their existing user directories, such as LDAP and active directories. Sometimes uh, Active Directory, some version of Active Directory is integrated with the Kerbos. So it provides a single point of truth for not just the, the, the enterprise, but also uh, for your Hadoop cluster. So the enterprise and the cluster are integrated using the same authentication. So to make things complicated, when you have this authentication, sometimes it's a benefit to provide some convenience for the user by requiring and or supporting a single sign-on. So here is more information about uh, uh, Kerberos. First of all, Kerberos supports authentic three-way um, strong authentication. It provides a mutual authentication between the service and the service users. So it's not just a authenticate the user to a service, but also make sure the service is the right service that the user is trying to access. Because there's a single point of truth uh, about the user's identity uh, and or the service identity at, uh, uh, at the KTC, KTC, KT Distribution Center for, for, for Kerberos, it protects against uh, you would drop in all replay attacks. So, um, so in, in Kerbos, so every user or service has a principle. So it's a user principle or service principle. So the credentials for the user is, is usually is a, is a password or for the service is a key tab which actually contains the, the uh, credentials such like a password for the, for the services. So that's authentication. So authorization is determining what you can do after being authenticated. So different, different components in Hadoop provide a different uh, uh, authentic, uh, authorization mechanisms. For example, HDFS provides uh, POCSIS uh, fire permission to, uh, uh, to control fire access. For example, it has, uh, has this uh, read, write, uh, or execute the permission on a file, 
for, you, for the user, which is the owner, or for the group, or for the, for the world, everybody else. And uh, other components also provide authorization, for, such as uh, MR job queues uh, can control who can launch an uh, MR job. HBase also provides ACLs on, on table, at the table and uh, column family level. The queue below provides a step further by providing uh, cell level authorization. So imp impersonation is another choice. Sometimes the system has no, no uh, means to uh, do the authorization, but it may think, so, okay, the underlying system may be able to determine what the user can do or cannot do. So it uh, tries to imperson uh, impersonate the connecting user and uh, wish that uh, the underlying system will do the right thing. So data protection. So th this aspect of uh, security is, a per, is a per, to protect, protect the data, even if the data is get compromised. Let's say you, it's get stolen or it was dropped. So the usual means is the encryption. So Hadoop, uh, so when we talk about encryption, it applies to the data, not, not the data on the disk or in a, as a file, but also the data in transit, such as the network communications. So Hadoop today already supports uh, encryption for data in transit for protocols such as um, RPC, DTP, HTTP, etc. Or in the case of high, it supports encryption for JDBC, ODBC. However, Hadoop has no native uh, security for for the data at rest. So in Hadoop HDFS, there is no encryption. It relies on uh, the OS level encryption. However, um, the good news is there is an um, uh, active GRAR, HDFS 6134, which provides, uh, uh, it's going to provide the uh, encryption at, uh, for, the, for the data, basically for the HDFS files. So stay tuned. So the last aspect of uh, security is uh, governance and uh, auditing. So this aspect is to provide security-related uh, monitoring, tracing, or logging. So again, in Hadoop ecosystem, it's uh, implemented component-to-component. Uh, component. For example, HDFS and uh, MapReduce provide the basic auditing support. Um, for Apache um, Hive, the metastore records the user interactions, such as who, when, and what. In, it records those information in the, in the metadata store. Apache Woozy, for, for, as another example, provides the auditing trails for the service usages. So next, next I'm formally introduce Apache Sentry. So as we... Um, as we discussed previous, so existing uh, authorization mechanism is uh, uh, fragmented in the course grant and the manual. So for example, uh, to share data uh, between users, so today mostly the, oh, it can be done by changing the file permissions to share it in a group for all, for all users in within a group. Um, so that's very manual. And uh, it's of course green, either share the whole file or, or nothing. So if you, share, if you want, have some information in the file you want to share, but not the credit card numbers, then this done, just doesn't work. And it's manual because uh, if you share among multiple groups. So, so with that, so a lot of times, it, it, in order to get rid of this headache, it just say, okay, let's make the file globally accessible to everyone. So, so a lot of times data is not protected. So from these problems, we can see that uh, all, we, all we need is, uh, is a centralized authorization uh, mechanism that uh, uh, works across, the, across components with ease of use and uh, is fine-grained or, or in a role-based. So what is Sentry? That's, 
So Sentry is the authorization, authorization module for Hive search in Impala and beyond. So it, it tries to solve the problem that we mentioned above. It unlocks the key robust access control requirements, such as um, security. So it's a secure, fine-grained, and a robust uh, with a multi-tenancy support. So Apache Sentry is uh, open source. It has been incubating for the almost for a year. It has ecosystem support. Today, Sentry is used in Apache Solar for search, or Hive Server 2, or in Cloudera Impala 1.1 and above. So these are the benefits that are using uh, Apache Sentry. So it allows you to store sensitive data in the Hadoop, uh, in Hadoop and uh, with the uh, access control, you can extend your data to more users, and it helps you to comply with the regulations or governance. Capabilities. These are the main capabilities you will gain with, uh, from, uh, from a century. First of all, is a fine grain. Fine grain, as we mentioned previously, sharing fire is not fine grain. It's at a fire level, either share, oh, share the whole fire or nothing. But uh, most of the time, we want to have a more detailed control or finer control, such as uh, um, in SQL, you want to control on the, on the server, on the DB, or on the table or views, or even further, maybe on the columns or row level. And uh, in the context of search, um, you may want to control on the um, fine-grained control on indexes, connections. And it is role-based. So, so with the role, so you, you are thinking more about like, uh, the role to achieve a func functional role in your enterprise, like an administrator or super user or the data analyst. Right? So you don't think about each what, who can access that this table or who can drop the other table. So it's role-based. It, that's the familiar term for the traditional database management. Um, and it supports uh, multi tenancy uh, because, so for example, in, in, for, in SQL, uh, each database can have a separate policy such that uh, you can delegate the administration responsibility to, to, to different administrators, one for each of the DB. So, you, so one guy doesn't have to manage the whole, whole databases, all the databases. So here is the architecture of uh, uh, Apache Sentry. So the core components is the policy engine in the middle, so which is, uh, is evaluate the policy rules that you defined. So on the top is, a, is the components, is the, we call it a, a list of bindings, one for each external component. So a binding can be considered as uh, the authorization cost from the external, external modules, such as Impala or Hive Server to a Solar, uh, into Sentry. So requesting whether it is, should, uh, whether the request is, uh, is permitted. And uh, on the bottom is the policy provider. So today there are um, fire-based, uh, fire-based storage is supported. So policy provider, uh, stores the policy rules that the user defined. Um, today we support uh, uh, fire-based storage, but uh, we are, they are working in progress for the database. So use the database as a storage for the policy rules. So here is how Sentry works in action in the context of a SQL as an example. So let's say this is Hive, and uh, Hive requests, uh, re receives a query, and uh, the parser, of course, it parses uh, the query and uh, validates the query against uh, uh, SQL grammar. If it's happy, so it, go, it builds a, a statement tree or abstract syntax tree. Then it will cons cons consult, uh, cons consult with the sentry to, ch to check whether um, 
the statement objects or like the table to be accessed, what are the actions, uh, to ask Sentry whether it should proceed. So Sentry returns back, say either yes or no, depends on the, uh, depends on the uh, policies. Then Kai will proceed to, to the next steps, either execute the query or rejects the query, depends on the response from, from Sentry. So these are the objects or actors that are involved in, in, in the evaluating um, Sentry policy. So user is the, of course, is the user that's uh, trying to access the data. User group membership, so which groups the user, uh, user belong to. And the resources, of course, is the data that are to be protected. And the privilege and the rules, uh, that's the, uh, that's uh, the, what operations is uh, allowed for which, um, which objects or which resources. So let's look at more uh, on each. So user, as we said, a user is the, um, the one who tries to access the data. So when reaches, uh, we reach in Sentry, the user should be already authenticated. Um, so user's identity mostly is a, sometimes is, a, is already in the setting context. So you don't have to find out or you don't have to uh, do additional authentication for that. So user group uh, membership is, a, is a most, most of the time is defined outside the century policy. So because most of the enterprise has already a center, um, center user directory, so you can obtain this user membership from this user directory, such as LDAP or Active Directory, or you can get a membership from HDFS. So, uh, sometimes the, the membership may be available from the session contacts, depending on the application. So resources are the data, um, most of the time is the data to be protected, such as a file or directory, you know, uh, in HDFS, or a table of view in Hive, or a UII, or, or the collections, or, or indexes for, for solar. So resources can be hierarchical. So most time it's hierarchical. So privilege, privilege defines uh, operation for uh, uh, resources. So such as you, uh, select a given table or view, or drop, drop a table, or create a table under a DB. So here is a, the lower part is the example of uh, how you would define uh, privilege in Sentry. So on the left side of the arrow is the, the resources that, um, that this, uh, this privilege is about. For example, it's a, connection is the customer connection, and the action is a query. So whoever has this privilege will be able to query this, uh, this uh, uh, customer connection. So rules, rules is a connection of uh, uh, privileges. So it is defined in the century policy. So for, for example, if you define a um, super user rule, so it should include all the privileges to, uh, for, for, the, for the user to achieve his functional, uh, functional rule in the enterprise. But for, for the uh, testing rule, right, it may, may, not have all, may not need all the privileges. So it may probably just need the sufficient rules to, to achieve the, for the testing purposes. Here is how you, how you would define rules in Sentry. So on the left side of the equal sign is the row, and on the right side is a list of uh, privileges. So group rule membership, that's the, uh, the most important components in, in, century, in century. That's where you, you assign privileges or assign rules to a group, not to individual users, but to a, to a group of users. So, so by having this level of interaction on the user side for the user group, or on the other side, on the resource side, there is 
uh, on the privity side, you have a, a, a row would provide greater flexibility to, to assign privileges to users. Certainly, it's for a group, you can have many, one, one or many, many uh, rows. Here are some examples. Um, at least group, as a user group, can have at least a query row or at least update row. For an administrator, it may have all the rows, but for the test group, it may maybe only require the test row. So this is how, um, this is how Sentry evaluated uh, um, when, when a request comes, how it evaluates against the row. So it will find out who is the user, that's the current user that is trying to access, uh, what's, the, what's the users uh, that the user belongs to, and uh, what resource is the user is trying to access, and how the resource is accessed. Is it a read, or read a file or select on a table, et cetera? Then it were, the main question is whether um, does, does it, any of the user's group has, the, uh, has a role that has the right privilege for this operation? So if the answer is yes, then great, uh, go, go ahead. So send. otherwise they say, okay, sorry, you don't have the right privilege or sufficient privilege. So, um, so while the century has been in capability for close to one year, but uh, I know there's a, a lot of works that's, uh, that's on the roadmap. We like to improve this uh, improve, uh, high. So improve uh, Sentry's capability. Uh, so this is the uh, list of things we like to do uh, in the near term. We certainly like to introduce Sentry to more Hadoop components for their authorization needs. So, and also we like to have a centralized policy store for the whole enterprise. Today we kind of have this file, file-based policy store, which is quite limited. So we like to have like a DB-based uh, uh, policy store that you can access over the network um, or, or over, the, over the web. And then we like to have the online grant and revoke operation, which, which we don't have right today. Today, what you will do, you will go there and uh, open the file and edit that, so it's quite inconvenient. So we like to provide uh, uh, grant revoke, like a traditional, what the traditional database would do. Uh, so th this is already work in progress. And the last that I think is more important um, is we like to provide a centralized authorization service for all protected resources, not just the data, but also metadata or services. Um, certainly we need your uh, contribution and support. Uh, your, support your support can come from by using the, uh, the, product, the projects that already has a century, such as a Hive or or Impala, or, or Apache Solar. But uh, you may also go a step further by introducing um, Apache Sentry into the projects that you are working on. So we really appreciate that you, you um, appreciate your help. So I think that's all I have. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, suppose uh, we have a HTTP front end sitting on top of uh, Hadoop, uh, Hive, and so on. How can we link uh, HTTP principle to uh, Xentry principle? Sorry, I didn't. Can you repeat? So suppose we have a HTTP front end, right? HTTP application sitting on top of um, Hadoop okay. HBase application, sure. right? So I'd like to know. Or have some ideas on how to have HTTP authenticated principle linked to X entry authenticated principle, if you know what I mean. If there is some work needs to be done for that to happen, or do you provide some support for it? Sure. So I think the question is whether uh, if the, the request coming from uh, HTTP, so how the Sentry can help in that aspect. So today actually, um, so it depends on the components. Um, so today actually, um, 
let's in term uh, in Hive it's already supported. You can for for HTTP request you it can already um, support authentication and authorization. So authentic I mean for the request can only have this the user's identity and it's uh, it's uh, credential. So once it reaches a high way, they can use that information to make uh, authorization decisions. Um, so, so I would say uh, for, for all components that are Sentry is supported, uh, you will get it uh, automatically, uh, the, the uh, Sentry's uh, capability for authorization. But, uh, but for the authentication part, it really depends on the component. Uh, what would it take to apply Sentry authorization strategies to other, maybe even non-Hadoop uh, components like uh, Apache Mesos, which runs, can run on top of HDFS? Could you use Sentry to apply that kind of authorization rules to HDFS through Mesos, for example? Sure. Um, so I think uh, if we we'll get back to that uh, diagram, so so the question is, uh, what what does it take to use Sentry in a in a project that's outside of uh, HDFS. Um, so while we, my talk is mostly about uh, the, how you use Sentry in, um, in the Hadoop ecosystem, but it doesn't have to be. So this is, a, so here as we see there, there's not much that uh, is, is about the uh, Hadoop specific. Um, so what you need to do is, uh, so you need to, first of all, you need to have a binding layer. That's the, the binding layer. To basically, you, in, your, in your project, you need to make a call to Sentry. So today, Sentry is, in, is a library so, um, that you can include in your project. So, so in, your, in your project, you can make those authorization calls into, into Sentry when, when, when you need to make an authorization decision. So that's the first thing you need to do. So you need to provide uh, the hooks to hook, hook, hook up with the Sentry's uh, library. So secondly, you would need to define your rules. So the rules today is uh, just a policy file, but later on you may have, uh, we may have a database store where you store these store this rules and also you can use uh, uh, grant and revoke to uh, manipulate these rules. So that's the two things I see that you need to do to support uh, any, any application. Yes? Yeah, this one. Quickly, are the bindings only in Java or? So, that is my question. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is whether the, the binding is only Java. I would say yes, today there's only, only uh, the APIs are only, only in Java. But um, I think if there's a need, we we like to put this in our uh, roadmap to support other components which are not Java based. Hi, uh, I have a continued question as well. So uh, is a binding layer a uh, fat layer? I mean, for example, if I want to implement uh, some, the binding layer for pig, is, is there any a lot of effort I need to take? No, actually, um, so the question is, uh, how complicated is the binding layer? So I would say it's just a few, um, it's just a few, few um, method calls. So today is a, it's a, it's Sentry is a library, so there are few limited API. So w when you make authorization, what do you need to provide? Who is the current user? And uh, um, what's the resources that the user is trying to access? And uh, what operation is, what, what kind of op operation it is? Uh, with this, all this information, it just uh, re return you a yes or no. Um, so it's, it's quite a simple. Um, I think what is kind of complicated is uh, when you have uh, the different applications that you're trying to access the same data, where they say highway is security, but a pig is not secured. So then you, um, I mean, so what's the security? I mean, user may bypass the one who, which is a, uh, secured, but to use the one which are not, such as an MR job. So f um, to give you further insights about this uh, binding layer, so right now, as I said, it's, uh, right now it's Java, but um, we, can, uh, we may think of to provide other APIs, or 
as I laid out on the, on the roadmap, we might provide some services and which provide the service API to decouple the, the, uh, um, the authorization callers from the, the, the authorization module itself. Questions? How are the resources defined? Are they discovered or are they actually kind of implementable by the user? Um, so the question is uh, how the resource is defined. So t today it's, it's not automatically discovered. It's actually user defined in a policy. So you, um, so you, you would, in the policy, you actually need to specify your resources like uh, uh, from server to DB to table. Um, Sentry is uh, neutral to this. He doesn't understand this, uh, this hierarchical concept. So you define the hierarchy, you define these uh, objects, and uh, you use these uh, objects, the, the resources, in your um, privilege or the roles. Hi, uh, I have one, uh, t actually two questions. Sure. Um, first is, uh, you mentioned that uh, Sentry is a, a central authorization um, components. Uh, can you explain uh, what is being managed centrally? You mentioned that uh, Sentry currently is a library. So where those policy are uh, enforced? Is it actually in the execution path of uh, individual components when user access it? So this is the first question. Uh, the second one is, uh, uh, what is the coupling between the authentication and the authorization? Uh, uh, for example, if I have a web portal, P, uh, user has already been uh, log uh, logging uh, authenticated, uh, but uh, later on when they, when they access a new system, uh, whether this uh, authorization century can actually uh, accept uh, already uh, uh, authenticated token or credential. So that's, uh, it, it's basically integration with uh, uh, authentication tooling, um, whether it's a standard base like OAuth or something like that, and you can uh, work with other you know, web, lay, uh, web, web layer. So uh, two questions, sorry for that. So, uh, so the question is a little bit long, but uh, let, let me start with the second question. So you're asking, uh, what's the difference between authentication and authorization? Is that your question? Well, actually not. It's, it's uh, uh, how do you integrate the two things together? I mean, uh, whether uh, authentication can be separated, like uh, we can uh, use a web portal already authenticated a user, then uh, when Century can accept that uh, already uh, uh, authenticated token or a credential you know, going on with the you know authorization business. So okay, okay. So um, so actually, Century is not for authentication. So it doesn't really care about authentication. So it's uh, it assumes that when the request comes to uh, Century, the user must be um, authenticated by uh, previously by any 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 module, for example, LDAP, or you use uh, Apollo that you mentioned. So, so Sentry assumes that, um, it uh, assumes the user is authenticated. All they need to do is, uh, is to check the, the user's identity and uh, find the membership, group membership, and, uh, and evaluate this against the policy that the user defined. So uh, authentication is out of, outside of the Apache Sentry. So your first question is uh, about, can you, sorry. Uh, uh, explain the, uh, the central uh, pieces oh, the cent of, the concept yeah. of central. Okay, uh, where are the uh, policies are maintained? Uh, where, uh, when, during runtime, where uh, the enforcement are actually happening? Uh, it's just all centr uh, centrally managed as well. And then probably you have the scalability or performance issues. Uh, okay. Sure. So today, um, I guess the question is, uh, so when I say Sentry uh, is, uh, is a central authentication module, so what I by mean that uh, what, what I mean by that is that uh, so Sentry is the single place where you define uh, all your policy rules, and uh, in the runtime evaluation actually happens at each individual module, so there is no uh, scalability issue, right? Because uh, your application is. Uh, is the, the thing you are running. 
So it just make an additional method call into a library. Um, but so this is a, what it is today. Um, you do the master course, but in the future we may consider, uh, as I laid out in the roadmap, is that we might provide some service where you don't, you don't make a master call, but you make a, a service call into some service running standalone. So at that time, there maybe there are scalability issues, but uh, I think uh, we can address that uh, at that time. Uh, so my, my thought on that would be we can provide some, because this uh, authorization, uh, there's not much computation. It's just uh, have this bunch of rules and uh, you get all the information, your answer say yes or no. So we can provide a, s a service with uh, some instances, such as a, like, a service like a, a, zook, a, a zookeeper. Uh, not, yeah, like a root paper, right? So it, uh, everything can store in memory and it can launch a bunch of uh, 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 service instances. And uh, so that I would think uh, can solve the scalability problem. Questions? Uh, we have a lot of time for questions. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you.